Hello and welcome to Game Guru Max Live Broadcast numero 11. I apologize for the excruciatingly long introduction. Reason, I don't know what I'm going to say, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. I was waiting for YouTube to pop up its little live broadcasty thingy and it took five minutes. I actually was playing that intro for five minutes until it actually popped up on YouTube. Five minutes before I saw it on a continual refresh. I don't know whether there's a trick or whether they update it when they feel like it, but five minutes just feels like a very long time. So in future, I may just actually start the intro five minutes early to give YouTube a chance to catch up. Anyway, I apologize if you've been sitting there being excruciated on <laughs> the intro, but I'm here now. I'm here, I'm talking, I'm ready to present. But always, I would like a little bit of a nod to confirm that everyone can hear me. The reason I wait so long for the YouTube refresh is that's where the chat window is and that's where I can hear you and I can see you and uh, hopefully everyone can say yes to the sound. Um, and whilst you are listening, because there is a lag, there's like a 23 second lag between me saying something and being able to read any of the replies on the chat. Um, be Feel free to post questions in the chat. You can actually use a question mark or a question in square brackets. I'll answer them at the end of this very brief live broadcast. And any ones I don't get round to, I'll actually put answers in the Game Guru forum thread that will follow this broadcast and the live recording on YouTube. So I'm just going to have a check. Yes, everyone can hear me. That's great. So I can crack on with the first part of what I'd like to show you. So yes, good afternoon, everybody. It is 4 p.m. BST here in the UK, specifically Wales, and it's a quite sunny day. I'm inside, but that's fine. I've also been peppered by interruptions literally all the way up to 4 p.m. I hope there isn't any more, but you'll be glad to hear there is no storms. So the first thing I'd like to show you is some quick artwork. This was just sent in today, and I wanted to share that because everyone likes a visual. I've been getting some better terrain textures. Obviously, we're inside, but just imagine the walls um, are really just an external wall instead of an internal wall. But as you can see, there's a nice bit of a floor there. You probably don't see it too well. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see what we've done is redone all the terrain textures with normals and all of the surface textures that you get with the Wicked Engine where well, we've applied them to our terrain textures. So here's one. This is the rock, so it looks a lot better with the proper surface attributes. This is more of a gravelly, ducky, coaly thing. And of course our grass. Obviously it's just the, the underlie of the grass. Obviously I have the grass blades that stick up. I'll show you that in a little bit. And a sandy, a sandy sort of concrete -y floor as well. So we've got all the correct textures with all the accompanying texture sets to render properly in Wicked. And we're also working on the grass types. So as you saw in the uh, pre-order page, there's multi-grass. So the idea that you can spray multiple types of grass so you can create the fauna that you need for your terrain. And so you can have long, nice, spicy. What we're current, currently looking into now is whether you need a normal map for rendering these quads. Slightly faster if you don't need a normal map. But the question is, does it look better with normals? Uh, the answer from the artist so far is yes. Normals really do make a difference with these decals that are actually placed in and around to create the artificial illusion of grass. So it looks like we are probably going towards including the normals as well as the albedo. And here is another picture. Um, Potentially that's the before and after, but yeah, I think normals is probably the way we're going to go. So that's some brief art that I wanted to throw at you because it was thrown at me and it will soon be integrated. We'll be integrating a lot of this stuff this week and I'll be able to show you a little more next week. <laughs> but that's let's call that just a teaser for you. Um, what I next want to show you is a little VR test. Now here's the thing, I have only so many ports in my graphics card and I couldn't do a VR a virtual reality test and have my second screen showing the chat window. So I did a pre-record um, literally 30 minutes ago with my Windows Mixed Reality headset, which I can just run for you now. This is me. I've got both controllers on. As you can see, that's teleport. Um, so you've got your laser, your teleport. You can. It's ambidextrous, so no matter if you've just got one controller or you're left or right-handed, the controls are identical. And so as you can see, you can move, you can rotate, you can teleport, and of course the HMD, the headset, that's where you can actually look around and, and check out what's going on. It's like a gazillion times better in VR. This is kind of like just rendered to a monitor, so it's stretched out. 
Um, the colours are a little darker than you would get in the VR headset rendering. But this is really just a copy copy surface. You know, there's no point spending your performance rendering to the monitor if you're actually in VR all the time. So that's all that really was. Um, so hopefully you get an idea of that. VR is in, it's working. I activated the button for my own personal version. You'll all have known that Alpha 6 was out uh, the door. And you got that, I think it was yesterday, did I send it out yesterday? Probably. It would look something like this, but without the welcome. This is one of the things that I wanted to show. Um, got rid of the little text in the bottom, top right left corner, and now replaced it with that dialogue just to explain this is an alpha, it's not the final software. We got the 2D rendering in the monitor, so now we've got the 2D renderings back. Of course, uh, some of you will know about the welcome uh, dialogue system, and of course the idea that you can jump to the user guide, you can decide whether you want to have this dialogue in the future, and of course create, which then takes you to the main software. And we've also got, let me just load in the level, say visuals.fpm, We've also got save standalone, so now you can save standalone, uh, decide where you want the standalone to be, and then save standalone. And then it will actually save out all your level, all the settings, all the files that you need out to a special writable folder. And the one thing you didn't see, but you might have got a glimpse of, is when you installed Alpha Build 6, which is now available to all pre-order users, there was a new installer. And that new installer is pretty clever. It actually installs the main software to the program files which as many of you know is read only, but it actually creates and uses a writable area in your documents folder. So actually all the write activity is actually done properly, Microsoft approved, in a writable folder. And your safe standalone will actually be written to that same folder, so everything in one place. So anything you've created, anything you've imported, that will be in that writable area. So that's another thing that's going on in the background you probably don't appreciate. We've literally ripped out large quantities of where the files go and move them to another location. So you might find that the difference between 5.9 and Alpha Build 6, there's a small step backwards when it comes to files. But don't worry, that's just a teething problem. Once it's finished, this is the best kind of installer. It protects your root stuff and of course you've got your writable area. And let's say you wanted to back up all the stuff you've been doing. You basically just zip up that writable folder and you're not carrying the weight of gigabytes of read-only stuff that you don't need because you can just install it again from the original installer or from Steam. So that was the installer and you can check that out with Alpha Build 6. What you're looking at now is 6.1. <laughs> I do want to send you another alpha before this week is out because there's things happening and I want you to be part of it. Such as I said, the 2D rendering, the 2D rendering in-game with the lower scripts and of course rendering to a quad. So you've got the 3D quads floating around which is specifically important for virtual reality. Um, there's one thing that was checked in only today and I think I'd like to show it to you briefly obviously there maybe is a few more tweaks but certainly feedback on it it's something that we think is a great improvement let's say you've got a barrel it's going a bit closer and remember it was always at a pivot point based on what the artist decided the pivot point should be now look what you can do by default it's find floor so if I rotated it now you see how it keeps finding the floor like this so it's not pivoting around the bottom, it's pivoting around whatever makes sense. It could be upside down, but it still finds the floor. You're probably more familiar with this one, which is the extracted Y. So let's say we selected this, it pivots around the base of the barrel. So that's the difference. Another important thing, and it was kind of hidden in keyboard shortcuts in Game Guru Classic, but what if you actually wanted to say, build a bri bridge across a gorge, uh, and you wanted the entity to stay the same, so you could go to fixed. So let's say we did fixed, right? And we raised it, let's say we raised it to 700. So it's just floating above the floor. Ding, ding, ding. So it's no longer trying to find the floor. It will literally just keep that height all the way across. So let's say he was doing a bridge and you wanted that bridge to cover that. It no longer automatically tries to find the floor because now when you actually got it extracted onto your cursor, you've now got these additional controls. I think it's a really nice touch. Of course, you can go back to the old behavior of not automatically adjusting for that pivot just by unticking that, and then it will be regular behavior. So if you like this or you think there's some tweaks that could be made so it's more useful for you, just let us know. It's one of those little things that we are picking up as we go and read feedback and our own experience with creating levels. And uh, I hope it will be of use to you. So those are the things I'd like to show. I've looking at the clock and I think I've got five minutes 
I have got five minutes for questions because I spent five minutes playing that intro over and over and over at you. So I'm just going to go to the chat, see if there's any questions about this or anything else that you're interested in about Game Guru Max internal development. So I'll start at the top. Um, there's a big juicy fly flying around, so if flies near the microphone, you'll hear a buzz. That's not hardware failure, that's that's biology. So going straight to the top, um, well not quite to the top, let's look for a question. Morning, morning, morning. Everyone can hear me, that's great, that's fantastic. Um, so we are growing down to the first question. Question, when do we get functional terrain? Well, I will have functional terrain later this week in the core product. Will you get it in Alpha 6.1? Watch this space. Keep checking the forums. Keep looking out for that 6.1. You may get a taste of functional terrain. What do we mean by functional terrain? I mean be able to sculpt it and paint it. And if we're lucky, save it and load it. And if we're very lucky, optimised. Uh, but don't hold your breath for all of those Christmas presents to come at once. What we really want to do is tie all of these connected, uh, these buttons and sliders and functions into that terrain. Right now, this is what we would call a flat terrain. So it just it's just something that we can place objects on and test the other aspects of the level building system. So we're very, very close now to adding all of our various prototype technologies into the core product. So it should come thick and fast now we've actually started that process. So good news on the way and not too much longer to wait for it as well. Uh, how's the tutorial documentation coming along? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. The user manual is fleshing itself out. Um, and we've actually we've brought someone else on to help with that process. So it should be a pretty decent user manual by the time we've got to beta. By the time we get to release, it will be finished. But as with all manuals, it will be a continual process of adding little bits that not necessarily missed, but may need to be expanded on. And of course, as we change the UI for a better UI and a better experience, then we're going to go back and change screenshots and more details of the user manual. So you should expect that at the beta. So expect the user manual in the beta. Scrolling down for the next question mark, what did I miss? Well, that's a subjective question. Here's another two question marks. Um, approximately what time will copy and paste be implemented? It's already in. <laughs> Let me pick this barrel. Um, do, 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 drop into the floor. We can, um, well, and just highlight it, Control C, Control V, and now you've got another barrel. If I highlight both of them, Control C, Control V, sorry, let me just highlight that properly. So highlighted those two, Control C, Control V, so Control V again, Control V again. So you've now got copy, copy and paste on multiple entities. Sorry if that wasn't in the previous video. It's just one of those things that, oh God, it's been needed to be put in for ages. And I just thought, let's put it in. I guess I put it in and then didn't tell anyone. So we do have uh, copy and paste. So hopefully some people will like the look of that. Uh, just going to the next question underneath that one. Can we get snap grid for the up access too? Yeah, that's a pretty good point, actually. You may want to like stack walls on top of the other or there may be some block constructions that you've got and you want to be able to stack quickly and easily. Um, let's look at that because there are some limits. We've actually made it easier to place on the X, Z axis. So on the Y axis, you know, it'd be interesting to see how the snapping works. Remember, you've got a mouse pointer, which is a two dimensional point on a flat screen. You know, it'd be great if we all had three dimensional pointers. But until we get that snapping on three axes when you've only got a two dimensional dis interface, that's going to be a tricky one. So, yes, I think it's important. There are situations where I thought vertical snapping would be a good idea, but it's the implementation that's really going to be a head scratcher. So uh, please feedback on that as you see more of a grid snapping take place inside the uh, in the next build. Will grass throw shadows? No, I, I'm sure we could if we switched it all to mega maximum. But I'm not planning on in, uh, putting more performance drain on the grass than absolutely necessary. I want it to look right, I want the grass to blend, I want you know, the ability to create and place grass wherever you want. But then giving it all of the properties of a really high def, crazy surface texture, etc. I don't know. Do you really want that slow performance? Or do you want the option? So if you've got a super fast graphics card, you can switch it on. Of course, you design it with a nice fast graphic card, export it, give it some with a low end card, and the game chugs, they'll blame you. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky question. I mean, we can certainly switch it on, but I'm just concerned that all of them shadows being cast from every blade of grass just might be a bridge too far in terms of performance and keeping it good and nice and fast. How about blood sprays and decals? Decals are in. 
so decals were part of the 2D work I mentioned. Blood splats, uh, I haven't seen them. I mean, I've probably just not loaded the images, but they're probably being splatted. You just can't see them being rendered. Um, but yeah, uh, there should be blood splats and, of course, the hit detection radar as well. So it's all running in the background. It's just the image isn't there, so you can see it render. Uh, well, will, when will the complete engine come out? Uh, complete is probably a subjective term as well. We are releasing it on the 30th of September. Uh, yes, that's right, folks. Lee set a date, 30th of September. You'll also find that date on the Steam uh, coming soon page. But the word complete... Mm, 50 years, I mean, is anything complete? You ask a sculptor, is it ever really complete? It certainly will be function complete and it will be stable and you'll be able to create games and save them and play them in non-VR and VR. Sure. Complete, I will leave that up to you and absolutely feel free to feed back on that if you don't feel my definition of complete matches up with your definition of complete. Now that was a complete response. <laughs> Next question, do assets uh, belong to the terrain tiles or are they placed anywhere in the world over streaming terrain? Well assets are entities and assets are placed on top of terrain. So assets are objects and objects will be placed on the terrain based on the terrain height field or in the terrain. So yeah, assets are separate from the terrain. Uh, will there be multiplayer in VR too? I don't see any reason why not. I am doing I've done most of the VR, as you saw a little bit. I need to do the weapons VR. I'm doing multiplayer next. Uh, that's the straight conversion from how Steam currently does its deathmatch multiplayer system. And the reason it shouldn't be a problem is because, you know, if you choose VR and multiplayer, you should get VR multiplayer. Put your headset on and you get the same game experience, but in VR. So there shouldn't be any reason. Obviously, there might be a gotcha that gets me in the next couple of days or weeks. But I'm going to find that out just about the same time as you find out. Um, going down to the next question. I'm also kept keeping an eye on the clock. I do think I've exceeded my timetable. But I'll do two more. So whoever's lucky to get the next few questions gets an answer. And it's, I hope it's okay, Cyber in essence, but having answered one of your questions, I'm going to skip yours. But you can <laughs> you can find it in the uh, thread. So I hope you don't mind that. I think we've known each other long enough that you, you're you okay for me skipping one. Um, can we get snapping grid info? Oh, so that's been done. Uh, looking for another question mark for the dome. When will water be added? And will it have vanilla underwater effects? Yeah, it'll have vanilla underwater effects. There's no special effort that we're going to make to underwater scenes. We're not going to create Poseidon Adventure 2020. You will see water when you see terrain because there's no way you can see the water table until you actually drop the terrain height so you can see that water. As soon as that happens, you'll be able to see the water. There will be some kind of effect when you jump, jump under the water. Um, similar, much like what you actually see in Game Guru Classics. Don't expect like some crazy underwater engine going on. I'm sure there's probably better engines that do a lot of really cool stuff underwater. Does say it will happen with Game Guru Max down the road, but for now, no, not for release. Just some basic effects. So, what is the question mark underneath that one? Well, that will come from uh, Reliquire, which is as extra entity been sorted yet? Okay, so here's the question. Has extract entity been sorted yet? So we can extract an entity and keep it height for placing them inside and over the top of other entities. Yes, all that thing you just saw earlier, that was what I mean. So, and I'll actually do a demonstration. I usually end on a, on a goodbye. We'll end with, let's say that was your roof. So you've got that there, now you extract. By default, you see you've got extract Y. If you have it on that, so let's say that was the roof and you selected that and extracted. Look, it's the same height, ding, ding, ding. Let's see you pick that piece of roof and then you go to that. See, it defaults to the last one you selected. So now you've got some more roofs. So effectively, it remembers the Y. And of course, combine that with snapping and then once you've got one piece of roof on your on your building, then you can just go bing, 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 and then paste it all. And that's kind of how it works. If you think there needs to be more flexibility, like I said, feedback, and uh, we will look at that and see if it fits in with everything else that you need to do with an entity, not only on its X, Z axis, but also on its Y axis. So I hope that was entertaining or informative. I know you'd like more, but of course, there's plenty of information you'll find in previous videos 
and of course in the forums, but the best of course is waiting for those alphas so you can play around with the new functionality. Lots of functionality in the next couple of days, and as I say, look forward to Alpha Build 6.1, which is my special treat to you to make sure that you've still got some builds to play with before we actually hit proper beta, which will, and I'd like to announce this, I'm pretty happy. If everything goes well, I'm looking to really give you a beta next week. There you go. Not giving you a date this time, just giving you a week <laughs> to think about. Sometime in that week, you will get a nice juicy beta, which I would like to call Function Complete. So that should be something to play with. So until the next live broadcast, which may not be two weeks from now, it may actually be next week as well. So another live broadcast. We've not decided yet. Could be another sneak peek, which is a more polished and, and, and uh, polished video for good production values. Or it could be there's so much to talk about on the dev on the dev side. Another live broadcast might be a better format. So until then, and I'll leave you with that as a probable surprise for next week. Thanks very much for your attention, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.